right. <laughs> so, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Welcome back to our Saturday class. I'm glad that we can do this practice together. Um, I'm sort of jittery today. I had a, a piano recital, as in I was in it playing the piano. I started taking piano lessons again like a month ago. And uh, it was like me, two seven-year-olds and like a 10-year-old. Like, and I was like so nervous, I was freaking out. And now that it's over, I have all this like weird nervous energy that I don't know what to do with. And I was like, wait, we have yoga yet. So hopefully <laughs> this energy can seamlessly uh, enter into our yoga practice in a way that's not like nervous and frenetic. I guess a good way to start doing that would be with some grounding breaths. Um, today's the sort of theme of today's class. It's always such a, I don't even call it themes, like a loose theme. Uh, I just call it refreshing um, vinyasa flow. So a lot of the um, postures that you will find yourself in, um, we have done before together. Um, and we're just gonna kind of seamlessly uh, tie them into one flow. Um, we'll be standing, we'll be on the ground, we'll be resting, we'll be working. It'll be hopefully a um, very holistic practice and hopefully you get at least a little bit of what you came for, if not a lot of what you came for uh, throughout this practice. So let's start as we so often do in um, a seated position, um, feeling grounded. So if you're um, sitting on your chush, you can kind of scoop away any flesh so you really feel those sits bones pressing into the floor. If you're on your knees, a block or a pillow, just take note of where your body is pressing into the ground or pressing into the support. <laughs> I was uh, doing Christmas gifts and there's just like, you probably can't see it, but there's like little trash everywhere. <laughs> Anyhow, so let's begin by finding our alignment, head over heart. Once we feel that, think of heart over pelvis. We get this nice long spine in one line, roll back the shoulders a couple of times, and as you do so, begin to tap into that breath. <sighs> Excellent. And if you'd like, you can close your eyes or just lower your gaze to kind of take in less stimu uh, stimulus from the outside world and just begin to kind of focus and hone in on um, what you're experiencing. Come to a place of alertness but stillness and begin to take in a deep breath through your nose let it out through parted lips, allowing yourself to slow down the breath. Again, inhale deeply through your nose and out through your mouth, feeling yourself settle on every exhale. Continue in a rhythm that feels good and slow and steady to you. everything relax on the exhale and everything uplift on the inhale. One more cycle of breath here. And on the exhale, you can begin to peek open those eyelids. We're going to start with a nice seated side stretch. So here, what you can do is you can place your left hand underneath your uh, sits bones on the left side. So you're really kind of sitting on those fingers, right where the fingers meet the palm of your hand, feeling that bone kind of press in there. We're gonna plant the right fingers uh, alongside the right body and just let the left ear drop to the left shoulder. You can play around with your gaze here, looking towards that shoulder or looking out, whatever you need here. And then sitting on your hand just kind of reminds it keeps, uh, it, it helps remind you to be grounded in that left side. Take another breath here, wherever you'd like. Really feeling yourself grow long on the right side of your body. And then on an inhale, come on up. Exhale, release that hand. Next breath, right hand comes underneath right sits bones. Really feel that connection. Just reminding yourself how connected you are. Left fingers come along the left side of your body, just pressing into the floor a little bit. 
And then let that right ear drop to the left shoulder. Feeling yourself stretch long in the left side. Gaze down, ow. <laughs> Gaze down if it feels good for you. I always have tightness in my neck and shoulders. This is like old news to you because I talk about it constantly. But like even changing my gaze, I feel the muscles are very tight. So taking it nice and slow. And then next inhale, come on up, release the hands. And we're just gonna bring the arms out in front of us and just begin to shake. Uh, and you can let the shake, like the reverberation kind of carry around your body, like up into your torso and your head and neck, or even just keep it in your wrists and fingers kind of flicking away. Just kind of like the bad stuff, just shedding it. Almost like you just washed your hands and you're trying to dry them, just get rid of the excess. So let's just do a little symbolic shaking here. Again, you can bring your shoulders involved. You can kind of get a little loosey goosey. It's kind of like shadow boxing. You're just moving and moving the arms. And then when you've aired out enough, come on back to a seated position. Take a deep cleansing, refreshing breath to signify the beginning of our asana, our physical movement flow. I mean, we've been moving this whole time, but really this is the, the starting line. We just been warming up. Now we're gonna come onto our hands and knees into a tabletop position. Again, just warming up as we often do. Our bodies may be used to this by now, which is great. You know right where we're going. We're gonna do inhale, gaze lifts, belly button drops, cow pose, and then exhale to round the spine, gaze between the knees, cat pose. And again, as you become more familiar with this movement, maybe we think less intently about the movement and more about the breath and how it, um, how it relates to the movement. Take a couple rounds here. Inhale, belly drops, gaze lifts. And then exhale to push it all away, rounding the spine. Maybe you get to new levels here, rounding a little more than you did last time or in the last cycle. Arching, maybe pressing through a little more. You can bring little circles in with your hips if you wanna get a little wild with it. Just take a moment getting what you need. The spine, the core, that's gonna be integral to all of our practice. So really feeling into the range of motion we have, letting breath drop in. That's gonna be setting us up very nicely for our practice. Good, I'm tucking my toes to give my toes a little stretch. Excellent. And when you are ready, we're gonna untuck those toes. Just take a moment to pause in an aligned Tabletop, so bringing those shoulders over your wrists, making sure those hips are over your knees, and trying to elongate the, uh, the, the neck, that uh, cervical spine here, so you're not dropping the head, you're not gazing up into this uh, cow pose, it's just an extension of your spine. And just feel into this position for a moment, take a deep breath in. Ah, and on the exhale, we can begin to tuck the toes, walk the palms forward, a, a palm print or so, send those hips back for a moment, and then up into the air, downward facing dog, and begin to pedal out those feet. Really stretching out those uh, tight leg muscles in the back there. Nice and steady. No. Take a deep breath here. <sighs> Let it out. Two more deep, mindful breaths. Very deliberate. And release. And again. <sighs> All these deep inhales through my nose. I got this new candle and it smells delicious. I just lit it for the first time and I'm very pleased. We're going to gaze forward at our fingertips for a moment. Drop the forearms down to the ground, lift the tailbone up to the sky, gaze between your ankles. Then we're gonna bend our knees just a bit. 
bring that tailbone a little higher. Like you're just kind of like, you're just like butting the ceiling here. And then begin to straighten up those legs or bring them with still bent knees, bring them a little straighter. Then we're gonna come back to our downward dog and then continue to bring those hands towards your feet and just hang. Hang loose, my friends, hang loose. And I mean really loose. So we're gonna bend those knees, let those shoulders round. Neck is nice and loose, head is heavy. If you'd like, you can uh, reach opposite elbows and gently swing side to side. Deep breaths here, <sighs> letting the blood come into our brains, making us so smart. <sighs> Oh gosh, <laughs> we're gonna release the arms. Bend the knees, really root through those feet. Feel the feet connecting. Special attention in the feet right now. And then as if you're pressing those feet so firmly into the ground, allow your body to rise. Root to rise. All right, roll those shoulders back a couple times when you get to the top. Take in a nice cleansing breath. Often when we're upside down, the breaths come a little shallower. And then when you rise, <gasps> Everything opens up again. Wonderful. We're gonna bend our knees, reach your arms up, and then exhale, press those arms away. And as you do so, send that torso between the elbows, or yeah, between the elbows, and then let the arms follow forward fold. Inhale to bend the knees, straighten your back, hands can come to your thighs, if that's comfortable. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift with knees bent, hands come to hips. Exhale to bring those elbows closer together, feeling that length in your halfway lift. One more inhale, and then exhale, forward fold. Final halfway lift, take it wherever you'd like. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, Whoa. forward fold. Well done. We're gonna begin to walk those hands out in front of us into a high plank or low plank with the knees dropped. Take a moment to really kind of pull that belly button towards your lower spine, almost like as if someone like was gonna like poke you on the belly button. You go, a little contraction there. Shift forward, exhale, lower. Oh my gosh, I have so much crap in this room. Lower down in between those hands. And then you're gonna press your body through, untuck those feet, press up into a little baby cobra. Again, elbows pulling towards each other ever so slightly. Exhale, lower your forehead down. Come on back to your hands and knees tabletop. Send those hips back, child's pose. I can't wait till I actually unpack the upstairs and I can have a space to do this. But for now, you can do yoga anywhere. <laughs> when in your child's pose, just take stock of how this practice has been so far for you. There's anything you'd like uh, to remind yourself throughout the practice. Um, maybe you can establish it now, an intention or a dedication if you'd like. Take a moment, be gentle with yourself. Take this time and breathe. And we're gonna inhale again, lifting from that little, that little, that lower belly, ah, back into your tabletop. Walk those hands in front. Tucking those toes, hips come back and up like you're hanging on a clothesline. Deep breath in. Exhale, release. You're gonna bring the left foot right to the middle. So it's like a, the point of the triangle between your hands and, it, and the foot. And you're gonna lift the right heel high in the sky. You're gonna exhale, you're gonna begin to shift those shoulders over your wrist, bringing that knee with you like you're gonna knee yourself in the nose, but that would be not very lovely. So instead, we're gonna step that foot in front into a high lunge. And then take a moment, lower that back knee, low lunge. You're gonna bring those arms up high overhead. Take a deep breath. And then exhale, plant those hands on either side of the feet. Lift the back knee, step the front leg back to meet the left leg. Inhale, shift forward, knees can drop if you like and flow through your chaturanga. Ooh. You're gonna meet in downward facing dog. Ooh. 
Take a breath here. Release. And then you're gonna bring the right leg to the center of the mat, like the center between your hands. So hand, hand, foot right in the center. And then lift the left leg into the sky. And then we're gonna kind of shift forward so that our shoulders are over our wrists, bringing that knee forward. I imagine like you're winding up to bowl, like the bowling ball's coming, coming, coming. And then, I don't know, strike my metaphors. Step that foot right in between those hands. Take a moment in this uh, runner's lunge. And then lower the back knee. Inhale those arms high up overhead, really expansively opening up through the front of the body. And then exhale. Uh, Lower those hands to frame the front foot. Step the left leg back to meet the right. I'm trying to create a little space for me. You're going to shift forward, inhale, and exhale, lower down. Move for your chaturanga. And then we're going to meet in our downward facing dog. Wonderful. And again, left leg comes to the middle. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, we're going to shift forward. This time we're going to bring the right knee towards the left elbow. Think of twisting in that lower belly. Take a breath here. And then exhale, send it back up. Inhale at the top. Exhale, we're going to send that right knee to the right elbow, lifting that ankle as high as the knee, or as high as we can. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, nose to knee, oh, crunch it up. Step it between with one or several steps. Wonderful, here we're gonna plant the left hand on the ground, open the right arm up to the sky. Exhale, plant the right hand on the ground or the fingertips, open the left hand up to the sky. Exhale, lower down. Square those hips to the front. Begin to rise, two hands up. Exhale, hands come to prayer. Press those palms into each other. Let the shoulders roll back and down the spine. Keeping those hips square. So pulling back the right hip, slightly pulling forward the left. And then exhale, lower those hands back down to the ground. We're gonna lower the left knee. You're gonna walk your hands back enough so that you can come up tall with that torso. Untuck the back toes. So now you're just in this proposal posture. Inhale those arms up. Exhale, you're just gonna frame the front foot with those hands. It really helps to have a block here if you, if you have one. You're gonna plant the uh, right fingers on the ground I'm going to bend the left knee, reach back with that left hand if you can, reach the outer edge of that foot, left foot. Open that shoulder, and then begin to bring a little lunge back into your posture. I'm just walking out my front toes so that my knee is still over my ankle. If you can't reach your back foot, that's a-okay. Just reach as far as you can, and then bring that lunge back in. I often have to kind of get out of my shape to get back in it. So take it in steps. And then exhale, release. Plant both hands on either side of the foot. Tuck the back leg, or sorry, the back toes. Lift up the back leg. Step it back. Inhale to shift forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Whoa. Either cobra or upward dog here. And then exhale. Send it on back. Take a deep breath at the top. Uh, exhale into your downward. Inhale, just peek forward. Are all 10 knuckles gripping into the ground? Fingertips like clawing into the earth? <laughs> Probably you weren't thinking claw. So take a moment, really think of clawing those fingers. And then feel the palms flat against the ground. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. We're gonna bring the right foot to the middle. Inhale, left leg high to the sky. Exhale, we're gonna shift forward. Cross that leg over, so right, uh, left knee to right elbow, twisting from that lower belly. Take a breath here. 
Next, inhale, send that foot back out. Well done. Exhale, left knee to left elbow. Feeling that crunch in the side, the left side of your body. Breath here. Inhale, send it back. And then finally, exhale, rounding through that body. You're like moving through your cat and cow with one leg. And then step it forward. Oh, you've made it. Plant the right hand on the ground. Open that left arm high in the sky. Celebrate good times. Deep breath in. And then exhale, lower that left hand back down. Inhale, lift the right hand off the ground. Exhale, lower back down. Next inhale, you're going to square those hips, really plant through those feet. And come to rise. You can use your thigh to kind of walk yourself up. Arms up. And then exhale, arms come to your heart. Roll back those shoulders, press those palms in, create a little resistance. Deep breath. Exhale. One more inhale. And then exhale, lower those hands to frame the front foot. Well done. You're gonna lower the back leg and just walk those hands back until whew, you can come to a lifted kneeling position, untuck the back toes. Take a breath, then exhale, you're gonna frame the front foot. Take the right hand, reach it back to the outer edge of that right foot, go as far as you can. It helps to have a block in that left hand so you can get some lift, and then sink back in. And then just begin to lunge into it. Oh, this right hammy, well it's actually not my hamstring, my right quad. I just like the word hammy better, but it is my quad that is actually sore. So I may not be lunging as much on this side. And by lunge, I mean let that pelvis drop forward and down, not letting your knee exceed that ankle, but making any adjustments with that little foot by that left foot by crawling it forward. Opening that right shoulder out. And then exhale, release it. Hands frame the front foot. Inhale, lift the back knee off the ground. Step the front leg back to meet the back leg. Next, inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower down to the floor. Press through, come into your cobra or your upward facing dog. And then exhale, come on back to drop your knees, come to tabletop. Open those knees wide. Send those hips back. Child's pose. Uh, here, take whatever mudra or arm position that you would like. A common one that uh, I like to use is having the elbows on the ground, having my hands in this little prayer position, and just dropping them over the back of my neck. It also feels, I feel like this is very an emotional pose. I feel very like connected in this kind of posture, very reverent. And then release your arms wherever they were, let them extend out in front. And then starting from that belly button, press up into uh, that tabletop position, square those hips, shoulders over wrists, knees over knees under hips. Now we're gonna walk the palms forward. Uh, tuck those toes and lift those hips up high into the sky, downward facing dog. Excellent. You're gonna inhale, shift into your high plank. The breath cycle here. And next inhale, lift the left toes two inches, three inches off the ground. Exhale to lower. Trying to keep your hips steady. Inhale, right toes just an inch or two off the floor. Exhale, lower. Inhale, left knee to left elbow. Oh, exhale, bring it back. Next one, inhale, right knee to right elbow. Nice and slow. Exhale, send it back. And then in our piece de resistance, 
lifting from that lower belly, oh, back into your downward facing dog. Take a break here. Take a breath. Feel into all that heat and power that you just generated in your core, in your arms and triceps. And then we're gonna inhale, lifting the right leg high. Exhale, you're gonna step that knee right between those hands into our lunge. You're gonna rotate the back foot so the toes are pointing out. Right toes are still pointing ahead of you. Windmill up, ta-da, downward, nope. Warrior two. <laughs> Take any adjustments you need. Um, it's nice to have your ankles as wide as your wrists, like your wingspan. It's kind of hard to see that without a mirror or like a buddy being like, yo, like <laughs> further. But it generally, it's a little further than we, we, we think it is. So walk out those feet as much as you need, ensuring that your right knee is not going beyond that right ankle. Roll back those shoulders. Settle into a nice lunge in this right leg. And then we're gonna isometrically draw those legs towards each other. So without lifting the feet, you're gonna squeeze those legs in. Like you have a giant walnut and your legs are a nutcracker. I don't know, I'm going down the, I'm going down the metaphor path here that no one ever wants me to go down. And you're squeezing your legs so much that the walnut breaks and you can share the fruit of that nut with everybody around. How joyous. So continue to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then exhale, release that pull, just settle in. Inhale, right forearm to right side. Reach that left arm beyond your ear like you just painted a rainbow on the ceiling. Exhale, come back through warrior two. Continue, continue, continue. Exalt, exultant warrior, also known as a million other things. And then next inhale, warrior two. Sink a little lower, deep breath in, gaze over the right fingers, beyond the right fingers, look beyond them at something in the distance. And then inhale, come on up. Straighten that front knee, hands can come to the hips for a little break. So your feet are still pointing, right foot to the right, left foot out. Gonna inhale, warrior two arms again. So we're gonna bump the hips to the left, heart is facing outward, begin to tip, like a teapot, down into your Trikonasana. Triangle pose. There's a lot of variations on where the hand on the bottom is. Common one is behind the shin, fingertips in the ground. Sometimes people hold in front or on their shin. If you have a block or something supportive, put your hand on that. Point is, get to a place where you don't feel you're collapsing in the right body, but rather using some of that muscle to keep you just from falling. Fingertips on the top, they're pulling up as if on like some magic thread up to the sky. Gaze can be out or up, deep breath in. And then exhale, gentle bend in that front knee just to facilitate you coming up right. Whoa. Excellent. We're gonna lunge back down into the warrior two, gaze over the front fingers, right hand. Inhale up. Exhale, windmill those hands to frame the front foot. Rotate the back foot so it's square. Inhale, step the front leg back to meet the back leg. Inhale, shift forward, move through your chaturanga. And exhale, come on back to home base, downward facing dog. I'm going to turn around so I'm not facing the back when I do the other side. You can do exactly Exactly nothing here. <laughs> you do not have to rotate. I'm gonna inhale the left leg high in the sky. Exhale, look where your foot is going, right between those legs, I mean those hands, step it through. Excellent. Next we're gonna rotate the back foot so the right foot is facing out. Using the strength of those legs, press your body up, settle into a nice lunge in the right and the left leg, warrior two. Find your alignment here. Front foot bisects the back foot. Shoulders down and back. You might have the tendency to lean a little forward. Bring your body upright. Gaze over the left fingertips. Couple breaths here. 
Gonna inhale, plant the left forearm on left thigh, reach the right arm up and beyond your ear to a little side angle. Inhale, come on back through warrior two. And then exhale, reverse that warrior. Inhale, come on back to warrior two. Exhale to settle here. Inhale to isometrically pull those legs together. Crack all those walnuts. You're the only hope the town has left to crack all these walnuts. And then exhale, settle into this lunge. One more breath. And then exhale, straighten up. Rest those hands on the hips for a second. You can do a little alignment check. Make sure spine is one long line, straight up. Right foot pointing out, left foot pointing to the left. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, bump the hips to the right. And then little teapot, tip, tip, tip. Finding a place where you don't feel you've gone so far that you've collapsed, but that you feel strong in that left side body and uplifting from that right side. The right is pulling you up, the left is keeping you grounded and stable. Take a breath here. And then exhale, gentle bend in that front leg. Come on back up. Exhale, settle back into that warrior two. Find it for a final time on this side. Deep breath in. And then exhale, windmill those arms down to frame the front foot. Rotate the back foot to be square. Inhale, step the front leg back. Meet the back leg. Inhale, shift forward and flow. Take a breath here. If you want to come down to your knees, have a sip of water, take a child's pose. This is a nice pause, a nice place for a pause. I'm going to turn around again. Whee. Really show it off here. Look at all these spins I do. And when you're nice and ready, come on back into your, warrior, uh, your downward facing dog. We're going to repeat that sequence and try to link it up one breath at a time. So you're gonna inhale that right leg high. Deep breath, exhale, step it through. Inhale, rotate the back leg, rise up warrior two. Exhale to settle. Inhale, plant your forearm or extend it all the way down your ankle. Inhale up. Exhale, reverse that warrior. Inhale up. Exhale, settle. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bump those hips, begin to tip. Hips to the left, tip to the right. Inhale, rise. Exhale, settle, warrior two. Inhale to hold. And then exhale, flow. Transition out into your Lunge, square the hips. Inhale, step the front leg back, shift forward. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Next inhale is on your rise into downward facing dog. Good work. Take a deep breath here. Deep exhale. Next inhale. Inhale that left heel high. Exhale, you're gonna step it between those legs. I'm just rotating, high lunge. Inhale, rotate the right foot to face out. Inhale, those arms up, downward facing dog. I mean, warrior two. Exhale to settle here. Inhale, strong. Exhale, forearm or slide it all the way down on the left side, extended side angle. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse that warrior. Let that flow come in. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, come to straight legs. Take a breath here. Next, exhale, bump the hips to the right. Continue to tip. Triangle pose. Inhale, rise. 
And exhale to settle, look beyond those fingers. Inhale here. Exhale, a windmill those arms, plant your hands, rotate the back foot. Inhale, step that foot back, shift forward. Exhale, lower down. Move through your chaturanga. One breath here, nice and slow. Feel into any warmth or sticky areas you might have, bring breath there. I'm gonna inhale the right leg up high. Oh gosh, I really need to get like a 3D camera. Exhale, step it between those legs. Inhale, rotate the back foot, come on up, warrior two. Inhale, straighten that leg. Exhale, hands to hips. Inhale, turn the right foot to point out to the side. On your next breath, little jumping jack, bring those feet in. Let's take a deep breath, lower those arms, palms facing front, feet are touching, shoulders back, eyes closed, Tadasana. Find some grounding in our flow. Excellent, and blink, open your eyes. You're gonna inhale the arms out. Exhale, uh, left arm underneath. Whoa, what she knows. Twist again. Clap those hands wherever they meet. And then lift those elbows a little bit away from your body. <clears throat> We're gonna sit those hips back as if you're going into a chair. Plant the left foot firmly on the ground as the right foot becomes weightless. Hover that right foot. And then you can cross that right leg over the left like you're having tea time. If you want, you can continue to twist that leg around as much as you can. And just to focus on less of the, the wrapping around of the leg. I have like spider legs. I feel like I can just like wrap and wrap and wrap, but requires no skill or focus. More what we can focus on is sending those hips back, grounding in our feet, finding something to stare at, a dristy, something to keep our focus, bending into that supporting leg, feeling into the strength and balance here. Take a deep breath. Exhale, one more breath here. And then exhale, begin to slowly unwind. Whoa. <laughs> Lower it down, give yourself a little shake. <sighs> Excellent. Let's take a moment to center again. Feet come together, arms come out, palms forward, shoulders back, eyes closed, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Find yourself stabilizing here. Feel your heart rate slowing down. Deep breaths. Coming nourishing breath in and out. And you can blink open your eyes. Reach those arms out. Oh, eagle. You're gonna cross the right arm under this time. Then twist again. Clap those hands together wherever they meet. Lift those elbows away from your body. Send those hips back into your chair. Feeling stable in that right foot, begin to weightlessly lift the left foot off the, le off the floor and cross it over the right leg, sending those hips down and back. You wanna keep twisting like a little pretzel. You can join me. But focus on lifting those elbows away, keeping that heart open as much as we can. It's really easy to get kind of hunched up here. So the upper body is as open as we can make it. Lower body is strong and settling and grounding. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Final inhale here. And then exhale as best you can, slowly unwind. Ah. Yeah. And you're gonna reverse that jumping jack. Send those feet out. Trying to walk them out about as wide as your wrist. We're going to turn the left leg out now. So we're kind of reversing the way we came up. Deep breath in, exhale, lunge that front leg, warrior two, deep breath in. Exhale, windmill those arms, frame the front foot, square those hips. Send the front leg back to meet the back leg, move through your chaturanga. After your upward dog or your cobra, send it back into a child's pose. I'm just going to quickly check my 
phone to make sure you didn't get booted out. I feel like I just heard a weird noise. Nope, okay. So you're in your child's pose. You've been doing such an excellent job. Take a moment here to acknowledge yourself, acknowledge your presence that you showed up, why you showed up. If you set an intention or a reminder or a dedication, now's a nice time to um, call it to mind again, to give a little, little honor to that right now. And if you didn't, just send a little bit of honor to uh, recovery, to the sense of restoration, which is what we hope to achieve in our child's pose. And it's also what you deserve. You deserve to feel rejuvenated and restored after hard work, after a lot of concentration. I'm gonna shift forward into our tabletop. And this is something I've been playing around with. We're probably gonna be doing it for a couple weeks because I like it. And we did it on Thursday. You're gonna be in your tabletop position. You're gonna keep that tailbone high. So even as your body lowers, keep that butt up in the air. You're gonna lower the torso down like you do in your, um, in your chaturangas, I always think of like a cat. And then see, as your butt is up, your, butt, your upper body is down. You're gonna kind of press that body through and worm-like lower the booty down. You kind of scoop your body through your arms and in doing so, your butt comes down, everything's flat. Let your forehead rest on the ground, arms long by your sides, take a deep breath. And release, let your shoulders be heavy go through a couple of locust poses which are really good for strengthening the lower back getting some stretch in the whole front body it's nice glutes gotta get those glutes glutes i'm tired that's why i'm talking while i'm like recovery all right we're gonna have our forehead on the ground we're gonna cr uh, clasp our fingers behind our back so your palms are kind of resting on your butt or your lower back you're gonna inhale and just lift the shoulders off the ground, your head comes off, but your hips, the tops of your feet, everything else is on the ground still. Take a deep breath in, pulling those arms behind you like someone just took you by the wrist and is like, no, come this way. And you're like, but my heart wants to go the other way. Take a deep breath and then exhale, lower back down. You can rest a cheek on the, on the mat and relax your hands. This next round, we're gonna lift the feet off the ground as well. So you're gonna be kind of in this like boat shape. We're going to bring the forehead to the ground, clasp the hands, deep breath in. Exhale, pull those arms behind you. I know. Let those feet lift. Let the shoulders lift. Feel the muscles in that lower back, in your glutes working. You're almost like squeezing your butt cheeks. Like your butt is a muscle. Like squeeze that to really help give you strength here. One more breath. Exhale, release. You can rest the opposite cheek on the ground now if you want a little bit of symmetry. Do. From here, we're gonna open our arms long. So we're like making a letter T with our arms. I'm gonna bend my left arm to help push my body over. So my whole body is resting on my uh, right shoulder. And just let your forehead come to the ground, or the side of your head come to the ground. Just getting a shoulder stretch here. And then exhale, roll back through center. And you're gonna extend the left hand, bend the right arm to really press your body over. You can even lift the right arm up to the sky if you want. Some people kind of drop it back. You can do whatever feels good for you here. Be very careful if you have tight shoulders, take it nice and slow. And then exhale, oh, come on back down. We're gonna press ourselves up through tabletop, walk those knees in just so we can send our hips down. It's an elaborate way of just getting onto our backs. <laughs> Excellent. So while we're here, we're gonna just take a moment to do a little bit of core work. So have the soles of your feet on the ground, hands can be behind you. But what you wanna do is kind of press that lower back, that lumbar spine forward. So instead of it rounding, literally from the lower back, expanding. So for me, I, I have to lean back a little bit to get that from upright, it's going to round. So just find what works for you, feeling the lower back really lifting and that kind of opening energy that 
upliftingness. You can really extend up your back, but it really starts down low. That sacral chakra. I haven't done chakras in a while. I feel it coming up. We might be doing a chakra series. Excellent. Then for this next section, you can point or flex your feet. You're going to lift, keeping the back exactly as it is. Lift the right toes. Lift the left toes. Ooh, you feel it. Your back wants to go in. You can straighten your legs as much as you like. If you want, you can lift one arm and then the other. Really, the intention is that lower back. It's less about the straightness of the legs. One more breath. And then exhale lower. So it requires a lot of core strength to keep those legs up. It requires a lot of back strength to like work in tandem with the core to not get all loosey goosey. So you're building a lot of strength here. Part two, similar setup. Find lift in that lower back, strength in the core. You're gonna lift one leg and then the other. You're gonna begin to drop the knee slightly to the right, palms come together, they come to the left. Opposite, but so knees to one side, hands to the other. Pass through center and touch a little twist. And twist. Begin to sink it with your breath. If having your knees up is a struggle, just bring your toes to the ground. It could be a nice anchor. Real twists here. Good. Take three more each side. Keeping your breath nice and regular. Last set, if you're going with my rhythm. You can lower everything back to the ground. Soles of the feet on the ground. Uh, we're going to take our hands and reach our shins and just tuck your chin in. And just make a nice little round little shape. You're just like a little pebble. We are now in our pebble pose. This is not called pebble pose. That's what I'm calling it. And then keeping that roundness in the spine now, because we've done a lot of straightening. Round it all down to the, to the floor. <sighs> Take a moment to breathe, 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 breathe. Excellent. We're going to hug in both knees. Give yourself a hug. A nice loving gesture from yourself to yourself. A little Valentine's Day gift. It's not Valentine's Day. I, I'm losing it. <laughs> All of that like nervous frenetic energy from my recital. I'm just like, Shavasana is calling me. <sighs> Excellent. You're going to open those arms out to the side. And you're gonna let those knees drop oh, to the left. If you'd like, you can release the left leg and place the left ankle atop the right leg and it kind of adds a little more weight. Um, just make sure that that's comfortable if that's what you'd like to do. Otherwise, just keep that left leg tucked underneath the right. Take a moment, feel into this twist and let the twist be a release. Bring it all out, let all of the excess go. Winding down, so let yourself give in. And inhale, unhook that leg if it was attached. Bring those legs past center, take a deep breath. Exhale to hug them in once again. Arms out, deep breath in. Exhale, let those knees come to the right side. Nice little twist. If you'd like, you can bring the bottom leg to cross over the top leg a little. You might feel it in the uh, IT band of that left leg a little. Eyes can even get heavy or close here. And we're gonna unhook that right leg, bring those knees past center, hug them in. Exhale, we're gonna extend them down, long, beyond, long out from our hips. And we're gonna inhale, lift our torso up. A surprise move. Exhale, forward fold. And then letting your spine be round, roll on down to the ground in our final asana of today's practice, Shavasana. So you can open those legs nice and wide like starfish, have those arms out, palms up or palms down. Feel your breath heavy in your body and maybe your body light. 
weightless. Maybe your body is just the breath for a couple of seconds. Let your eyes close. Notice any sounds around you. The more we listen, the more we tend to hear. And bring your attention to the feeling of your heartbeat. You can't feel the heartbeat. Send your intention to the area around the heart and send it warmth. And then finally letting your attention settle on the breath, the quality of the breath. And then let your attention focus nowhere at all. Let it just dissipate into thin air, leaving just you exactly as you are. Stay like this for a few more moments. And together, let's take a deep breath in and a deep exhale. You're invited to stay here as long as you like. If you'd like a little more guided activation, you can begin to bring movement into your fingers and your toes, maybe your head rock side to side. Taking back in sensations of your body, of the room, of the ground. And ever so gently shifting onto one side Tucking in those toes, eyes still closed. And then on an exhale, using your arms to press back into an upright seated position of your choice. I'm gonna bring your hands out in front of you and gently rub them against each other a little faster to generate some warmth, some heat. I think it's like 27 degrees out today. And then with those hands, press, the, press those heated hands to your heart. Maybe you can feel that heat going from your hands into your body where it began in the first place. You can bring your hands to prayer, take a deep breath in. And then exhale to gently bow forward, eyes can come open just an acknowledgement of this practice and of this community together. I want to wish you all of my thanks for listening to the metaphors, for being in the practice. And I offer you namaste in conclusion of today's flow. Uh, I hope to see you again. Um, all donations from this class and the classes this week and probably for the weeks to come will be donated to Studio 34, which is where I got my uh, yoga certification. Um, it's a lovely space of healing and uh, as a small business it physically pains me to see it struggling. Um, so I appreciate anything that can go towards keeping this wonderful space alive. Uh, I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend and with that, ta-ta, farewell. <laughs> hope you stay well. <laughs>